probability trees are really great ways for solving problems that maybe have more than one event or something that happens a few times and it's helpful to try to diagram out all the possibilities that might happen. So if we're looking at doing probability trees, some important steps for us are to think about well, we've got to be able to show kind of in a picture all the possible outcomes that might happen. So if I'm going to draw a probability tree to show all the possible outcomes, if I flip a coin and then spin the spinner. My probability tree will look something like what I'm showing below, but we have to fill in the details. So a couple things that are helpful to do first is to think about what are the outcomes. So for a coin, I can get a head or a tail. The probability for a head is one half. The probability for a tail is also one half. On the spinner, I can get red, I can get yellow, or I can get blue. And because the spinner is broken up into three equal pieces, I'm going to assume it's fair, but it's one-third, one-third, and one-third probability for each of those. So if we think about what I'm asking us to do here, from each node, put a branch of every possible outcome. So from the very start here, the first thing I'm going to do is flip a coin. So from the start, what are the two possible options for me for flipping a coin? Well, I can either get a head or I can get a tail. And now we're going to write the probability as a fraction or as a decimal only along the branch. Well, this is my branch of that tree. And the probability of getting a head is one half. The probability of getting the tail is also one half. Now if I flip my coin and I get a head, I'm going to end up along the tree if I'm using it as a diagram up here. And if I flip ahead, well, I still have three options of red, yellow, or blue on the spinner. But I have to have the same options available to me if I end up flipping a tail, which is why we repeat it down here. I could get a tail first, but then I still have the options of red, yellow, or blue. And so it's a slight redundancy there, but it's allowing me to kind of trace every possible outcome. I could get a head and a red or I could get a tail and a red, and all the available possibilities. So, again, for each of these branches, I need to put in the probability. The probability of getting a red is one-third, yellow is also one-third, and the blue was one-third. Here again, one-third, one-third, and one-third. So this again shows me all my outcomes, and if I need to figure out my probabilities, Let's take a look here. Calculate the probability of getting a head and a yellow. So calculate the probability of getting the head and a yellow. Well, one thing you can do is trace along the probability tree. So we'll use a yellow or highlighter here for a yellow. So from the start, I'm going to get a head, and then I'm going to get a yellow. So as I go along here, along the branch, I'm going to times along the branch, which is what they say here, times along the branch. So the possibility of getting a head and a yellow is equal to one-half times one-third, which is equal to one-sixth. So my probability of getting a head and a yellow is equal to one-sixth. The next question that I'm asking bit more complicated. What is the probability of getting a head without a blue? So here, again, probability that I'm going to get a head. And then without a blue, well, that means not a blue, so I could potentially get a red, or I could potentially get a yellow, but I'm not going to take the blue option there. So I need to figure out what's the probability of getting the head and the red. Again, I have a one-half shot at the head and a one-third shot at the red. So that's one-half times one-third is also a one-sixth chance. And now if I'm looking for a head without a blue, well, that's more than one outcome that I want. So in this case, I'm looking for this or that to happen. So if it's more than one set of outcomes, this is what's happening here, we're going to add them together. 
So I would say one sixth plus one sixth equals two sixths, which is simplified to one third. So again, in the first thing here, head and yellow, I'm just finding out one particular outcome of getting a head and a yellow. I times along the branch one half and one third gets me to one sixth. In the next problem, I'm looking for a head without a blue, and there's two ways for me to get a head and not a blue. One is with the red, and one is with the yellow. And since there's more than one way to do it, I find out what the probability is for each of those by timesing along the branch, one half times one third, and then adding them up because I want more than one of them. So again, with probability trees, we times along the branch, and if there's more than one that you want, you add them up. A couple of other things to keep in mind here that you might notice, and we'll go on to look at. What's one half plus one half? It's a whole. So for any set of outcomes here, like between head and tail, it should add up to one. And these guys here, I've got the three possibilities, and if I add all three of those up, I also get one. And we'll see how that applies in the next problem here. The probability tree below has been started for you, showing the probability of a sunny day and of being a windy day. Complete the tree and answer the following probability questions. So we have a few questions below. Now what I just mentioned above, above is that each set of branches has to add up to one. So here I've got some bits that I need to fill in. All right, so first thing I might do is fill in the outcomes here from the start. I've got the possibility of it being sunny, and if it's not sunny, that's my other possibility, so I need to put down here not sunny. So I really only have just the two ways of that happening. It's either sunny, or it's not sunny. Next thing to look at here would be that it's either windy, or it's not windy. And same. Here I've got the not windy down below, so what I'm missing up here is the windy. Now that I've got all my possible outcomes, again, like above, some redundancy, sunny or not sunny, but then we see the windy, not windy, put on there twice, but that's to cover the possibility of it being sunny or not sunny. So, now my next thing is to fill in the probabilities. I see that I've got a 0.6 chance of it being sunny, so I need to think of well, they have to add up together, and if it's a 0.6 chance of being sunny, it needs to be a 0 0.4 chance of not being sunny. And where that comes from is 1 minus 0 0.6 gets me 0 0.4, because again, these two things need to add up to 1. If we add them together, they need to equal 1. So same idea here, let's think about this, if we have a 0.3 chance of it being windy, what can I add to 0.3 to make sure that I get to 1? That's going to be 0 0.7, and again if you needed to, you could say 1 minus 0 0.3 gets you 0 0.7, that's the missing piece. And we're assuming that's the same probability whether it's been sunny or not sunny, so here we see that it's 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. Sometimes you might find that there's a higher or different probability depending on the previous outcome, but here it's the same for both. Okay, now that I have my probability tree, let's look at doing some calculations with it. So calculate the probability of having a windy day. Well, the probability of having the windy day, let's figure out how many times that can happen. I can have it be sunny and windy. But I could also have it be not sunny and windy. So this is the situation where I have more than one outcome that's windy. So to figure out the probability of that happening, I need to make sure that I do both of those and add them together. So like we said before, we're going to times along the branch. So that's 0 0.6 times 0 0.3. 0 0.6 times 0 0.3. Here we get 0 0.18. And down below we have 0 0.4 times 0 0.3. 0 0.4 times 0 0.3. 0 0.12.
and since I've got more than one possibility for it to be windy, sunny and windy or not sunny and windy, I need to add those together. So 0 0.18 plus 0 0.12 gets me 0 0.3. Calculate the probability of having a sunny day that is windy. So here, calculating the probability that it's a sunny day and that it's windy. That's this branch here, sunny, and then windy. And we've already calculated that, again, timesing along, so we can just copy that same stuff down. 0 0.6 times 0 0.3 equals 0 0.18. So with probability trays, a couple of things to remember. We're always going to times along the branch. If there's more than one outcome that you want, times along to the end to get the probability for each of them, and then add those probabilities together. Now for each set of possible outcomes here, like between sunny and not sunny, those probabilities need to add to 1. So make sure you check your math carefully. 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 gets me back to 1. And 0 0.3 and 0 0.7 get me to one as well.